Jesus said, not one stone will be left upon another stone. All will be thrown down. May the words I speak and the words you hear become for you a word from the living God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Thanks for singing your last song, you all. There's nothing more encouraging to a preacher or someone's talking in front of people to realize that how amazing to find that you want me and that you don't really need me. <laughs> so actually I'm mostly incidental here and the Holy Spirit is much more important than whatever I say. So let's begin. The text we have today has a long description behind it, a big word. It's called an apocalyptic writing. Apocalyptic. I see some of you yawning already. <laughs> so let's start off on another track. Uh, where I live, and I live in a house, uh, Robbie and I uh, bought a house a couple years ago. So it's not an apartment and it's not a rental, so actually we have a little garden as part of our yard. And it's not a very fancy garden at all. It's just hedges and then some flowers out in front of the hedges and then some grass. I mean, it's not anything amazing. Nevertheless, we, we messed around with the garden all summer long. And like many of you, um, we went down to the nursery and bought some plants and we asked them when we went there, said, what plants would grow about this high and how far are they going to spread out? And, and will, they look, will they look like this? And they said, yes, it'll look just like this plant right here when you put it in your yard, but it'll be much bigger and much prettier. Well, somehow the plants in the, in the greenhouse look a lot better than the plants in our yard. As it turns out, that some of them uh, struggled and the bugs ate them a little bit. And we had some deer in our neighborhood, and deer happened to like this one kind of bush. It's always chewed down to the nub on the bush. But we trimmed them and we watered them. We have an automatic sprinkler thing, and I'm the cheap one. I said, Robbie, just do once a week is good. She's like, every day for five minutes, and it gets too hot, you wash it again. And, and there are these weeds there. These weeds, I don't know, these are like, you know, monster weeds because they just won't stop growing. They, they make babies incessantly. They're little tiny things, but they, and you pull them up and all of a sudden they're back again. I don't know how it works exactly. They look like little dandelions, but they're not. In any case, we weeded and weeded and weeded, and then we uh, finally got, at the very end of the summer, we had success. The, the old faithful plant that you can never kill in Texas it's a hardy, hardy plant, and it grows really big and really beautiful. This is the, the lantana plant, right? You can't beat them because you can't beat them with a stick. They just survive everything. So we transplanted them from a pot to the yard, and sure enough, they worked. And um, you know they come in lots of colors, mostly orange and yellow. Ours was yellow. We have a pink one, too. And so towards the end of the summer, it finally worked, and it grew and it grew and it grew. It loved all the water we were giving it. And it was really nice. In fact, it was better than nice. The little lantana in our little yard was quite beautiful. Quite nice. Now, we're at the end of the summer now. We're into November. And everything's starting to settle back down again, right? Your gardens and your flowers are on their last blooms and our lantanas are starting to get a little brown mixed in with the very last of the blossoms and probably by December the lantana will be gone and then we have to figure out if we're supposed to trim it back or leave it go but mostly it'll be gone that's how gardens work the, the purpose of a garden is to create great beauty and the end of a garden in the winter time is that the plants die. The purpose of a garden is beauty. The end of the garden 
is death. And the plants will return back to the soil if you leave them out there and they really die. That's the end. So we know the purpose and the end of the garden. And although that's such a simple image, I wanted to share that with you all because I believe it's very important to know for us what is the purpose of our lives and what is the end of our lives. And I would say that it's just like the garden. The purpose of our lives is that we create beauty and grow beauty. And the end of our lives, we will pass from this earth and return not to the earth but to God. The body will go to the earth, our essence will return to God. So. It's essential for, for you to know what you're doing here and, what, and where you're going and what your end is. The passage today reminds us, it says, look, the end is coming, so be ready. And the end has two different levels to it, and today we're only dealing with one level. This first level is what is the end of our lives, what is our destiny, what is our purpose, what is our goal? In about two weeks, we'll have more opportunity to look at this apocalyptic writing. And believe it or not, as a preacher, I will tiptoe into the water and answer the question, what is the purpose and end of the world? But for now, we stick with us here in the room. Our purpose, if you follow the analogy closely enough, God would be the gardener. And he's planting a garden that our lives become. Our lives are to bloom with some beauty. And then towards the winter, as the winter approaches the end of our lives, we will die as the plants die and return not to the earth, but we will return to God. It's just essential as you look at the world around us and we look at what is, what is Christianity about to know why we're here, where we came from, and where we're going to. So, know that there is a beginning and a middle and an end to our lives. You guys are probably at the beginning. And you will be the flowers from God's heart. Your purpose in life, whether you're an accountant, or a dishwasher, a waitress, or a secretary, or the president, will be to bring beauty into this world. To reflect the glory of God. That's your purpose. That's your goal. Your destiny, your final destiny, is like everybody else in the room here. We will all end up returning to God at one point. That will be our death. So, as we read about the end times, and what does the end bring? What is the final consummation of life? What's the point of all this? I would simply say that you and I are like God's gardens. God has planted us and would like our lives to bloom with something very beautiful. He knows we will return to Him at one point. But you know when you see a garden, maybe not my garden, but when you see some gardens, <laughs> you look at them and you'll see the flower, flowers and the plants and you go, wow, that is beautiful, very nice. When God looks at our lives, He will say the same thing. Wow, your life is beautiful. Very nice. 